Good afternoon, everywhere. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here and to share our experience using the uh, uh, new platform, Arieta 750. So I'm moving the slide now. And uh, basically, you know, interventional radiology is taking a growing role uh, in many, many aspects uh, for uh, ultrasound-guided biopsy, for nephrostomy, drainage, and tumor ablation, of course. And guidance improvement is the key for uh, improving the results of these procedures. And ultrasound is playing a key role for uh, lesion identification and the vascular relationship of the lesion to uh, the surrounding environment, and particularly for needle insertion. Visualiz visualization of a needle track and the needle tip is also a key for uh, having a very safe procedure. And of course, at the end, we just love the possibility to combine information from ultrasound and CT, and this is done through fusion imaging, and fusion imaging has been um, very much improved with the introduction of automatic tracker uh, techniques. So uh, clearly ultrasound guided procedure have a major ultrasound, um, a major advantage, and this is real time, uh, imaging technique. And so as you can see here, in this case of a very difficult biopsy, as the lesion is really center, you see uh, uh, the needle advance uh, to toward the, the, the node and, uh, and getting the sample in a very safe uh, situation while the case is, is really difficult. Ultrasound has also advantage of a high spatial and contrast resolution very large availability, having done toxic and being mobile. And we can also use Doppler for a vessel identification and ultrasound contrast agent administration for a vascular assessment. Of course, we know that there are some uh, limits and um, uh, sometimes the lesion identification is very complex in the postoperative situation. The needle track imaging can be difficult in obese patients and limit, uh, limited imaging quality after surgery biopsy and uh, evaluation of surrounding structures. And as you can see here, the needle was positioned in a very uh, well, uh, very long approach in a very deep uh, patient. Of course, there's no question of you know, uh, fighting the two techniques, ultrasound and CT. And we know that CT has a clear advantage in terms of spatial and contrast resolution if we use mainly a contrast uh, agents, uh, needle track visualization, and limited operator dependency. But we know very well the limitation of CT, and that's no real-time imaging besides CT fluoroscopy, the need of uh, iodinated contrast media administration, it's time consuming, we have metallic artifacts. So, uh, and, and at the end, of course, radiation exposure. So when we're targeting very deep lesions, as you can see in this case, uh, the needle was positioned you know, in a very oblique way and you see how well uh, uh, the result with, with ablation you can have in this case. So, uh, really uh, uh, putting uh, advanced imaging features in uh, uh, new ultrasound platforms is, is uh, critical. And you see here that we can do some she wave point measurements. We can also use advanced uh, Doppler techniques that really uh, mimic uh, and, and feel the Doppler lumen, the, the vessel lumen, or also detect very slow flow inside uh, uh, kidneys, for example, uh, as well as in hypovascular tumors. And at the end, we would love to use all of these techniques today with, together with the fusion imaging. So let's see a very simple case of a patient coming for the, a suspicion of a, a small renal mass that was uh, incidentally reported. But the, 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 the renal mass is very difficult to see, you know, here at the pole of the, of the kidney. 
And uh, the use of uh, contrast, of course, is, is a critical as, as you will be enhancing your diagnostic capabilities. And this is very well shown in, in the literature. And you see how well we can see now that this is a true mass. This is not just an artifact or a pseudo tumor. This is a true uh, tumor. And you see uh, the correlation with the MR that was performed a little uh, late, later after the contrast enhanced ultrasound examination. So uh, this is another case of a patient with a, a, this uh, hypoechoic uh, hypovascular mass. And the question was, is this a hemorrhagic cystic lesion? And basically, you just inject contrast and you immediately can see uh, the enhancement of the lesion with a very strong enhancement, just confirming the presence of this lesion that is not uh, um, any more hypovascular as uh, evocated by the Doppler examination, but truly hypervascular uh, as displayed with the contrast administration. So uh, uh, moving now to, and, and, and this was a chromophobic renal cell carcinoma. The uh, advantage of uh, uh, good uh, ultrasound techniques is that we can uh, characterize even very small lesion as this hypoechoic area that was detected or suspected during the MR examination of this renal transplant. Basically, a very good image quality can just suffer by itself uh, and, and you see that this is just a subcapsular uh, cyst. And um, incidentally, we also discovered the mild renal artery stenosis in this uh, uh, renal transplant. So good image quality is still the key for uh, interventional procedures. And this is a very large uh, uh, fatty lesion in the retroperitoneal space. And you see that we can do guided biopsy in a very safe situation. And this was a, a hypo, a hyperechoic uh, retroperitoneal uh, lipoma. So being safe uh, is the key. And of course, the use of fusion imaging is exactly moving to that area. At the start, it was just a combination of a PET CT, a PET to CT or MRI. And uh, the technique has been extended recently to ultrasound with the additional challenges, of course. Uh, the principle is quite sim uh, simple because we just uh, superimpose the ultrasound information to CT or MRI data to take advantage of the both techniques. Ultrasound with the uh, real-time imaging, spatial resolution, and being mobile, and CT or MRI with a contrast resolution and overall evaluation of the disease. So uh, with these two techniques, of course, we can improve guidance and improve the safety for very complex uh, interventional procedures. Basically, there are three different techniques for uh, doing these uh, uh, fusion imaging. So we can use uh, uh, registration or synchronization that is cognitive. So basically, you just look very carefully to your CT or MRI, just move to the ultrasound room and then do the procedure. And then now we have next generation, I would say, uh, techniques that are using software uh, fusion uh, for fusion. Uh, we can use all anatomical markers. And this is just by uh, simultaneous uh, identification of uh, same uh, structures on the uh, CT or MRI or ultrasound, or now we can even use much more advanced technique, much simple and faster techniques that uh, are automatic fusion. And this is done with an active patient tracker that is uh, located uh, up to the skin of the patient during the CT or MRI procedure. There's no consensus for the best technique. Uh, and there's no uh, proven superiority of one together to the other. Nevertheless, uh, basically, we uh, are very uh, much uh, uh, comfortable with automatic fusion using this active tracker uh, technique. 
so cognitive fusion has clearly advantage because it's, it's very simple, it's fast, there's no need of any additional equipment, but also require a quite extended training, a long experience, a long uh, learning curve. So basically, more, you, we're using much more and more the um, uh, automatic uh, fusion techniques. So in this situation, we just combine the CT or MRI, in most cases are CT guided techniques. So we uh, combine ultrasound and, uh, and the CT information, and then we just fuse this technique, uh, these two techniques for uh, better guiding of procedures. For this, we need electromagnetic field generator, and we also need a transducer with the magnetic sensors and, of course, a graphic interface. So, if we uh, look uh, on, on a few cases, um, I'm very happy to sh share with you uh, these uh, procedures. Uh, let's see first a, a patient with an incidental discovery of a renal mass during prostate cancer st staging, and this man has some chronic kidney disease. So, this is a very atypical uh, uh, mass that is sitting at the lower pole of uh, the right kidney, and you see on the CT uh, that was uh, performed for staging the uh, prostate cancer, this very large mass, and you see it looks like a cystic mass with some uh, component inside. And after injection, you see that the mass is really homogeneous and poorly, poorly enhanced. So, uh, basically, the first step is clearly to say or to, to, to identify or characterize the mass. And if you very carefully look on the side, you can see that these areas are slightly enhancing. But is this so uh, a hemorrhagic cyst or is this a true tumor? So basically, the first step is clearly to use the uh, uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound. And with these techniques, you can see how well we can detect the solid vascular components of this uh, lesion that is not anymore a hemorrhagic cyst, but the hemorrhagic necrotic uh, renal tumor. And this is a true renal tumor. And uh, that was uh, uh, not very well seen uh, for uh, during the CT examination. And this is, these are some reformats. And for BAPSI, of course, you should be very careful on the uh, location for the uh, bowel structures that will uh, not we, that are sitting, you know, on the path of the needle. So for these, we decided to do the biopsy under fusion uh, guidance, and this is exactly what you see on the left of the your screen. There, there are these uh, fusion image, and we see that we are on the right page, and we can fuse and 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 still use contrast enhanced ultrasound. And uh, we identified the uh, solid components of, of the lesion, and then we will insert the uh, needle under the uh, uh, guidance and perform the biopsy exactly at the side of the solid components. And the first biopsy uh, uh, procedure was successful and basically revealed the presence of uh, uh, renal. Uh, carcinoma, uh, carcinoma. This is a, a necrotic uh, papillary carcinoma. But look at how well we can see the needle track and also how precise can be the biopsy. And this is very important in a patient that we don't want to repeat the uh, biopsy procedure because of a failure, because we only get some necrotic specimens. When we do ablation, and this is particularly true in the side of the kidney because it's very lateral, and the kidney is quite much moving, uh, uh, you see that we can uh, combine uh, uh, CT and, uh, and uh, ultrasound information all together to be very precise on the location of the cryo uh, needles. And if we are very precise, of course, we can be uh, very safe. And you see that the needles, each of the needle, we see extremely well the path, the tip of the needle, and the, the tip of each needle can be inserted in a very precise way. And this is the result after nine minutes of a, a cryoablation technique. And of course, uh, you see here 
the uh, ice ball with ultrasound, and uh, the ice ball with ultrasound was really covering the entire lesion. So registration using anatomical markers is not that technique, of course, but much more now moving to automatic fusion with active patient tracker is a safe and, and very rapid technique. And in the case of uh, discrepancy, you can add a few points just to correct uh, uh, a translation on the, uh, on, the, on, on, on the image, on the ultrasound image. So basically, it's a simple technique. It's fast and it's accurate. So it's very helpful when we are performing complex ablation techniques. Of course, there are a few tricks in the, uh, uh, in the way we set uh, the system. And this is particularly true for the electromagnetic field generator. Uh, this uh, generator should not be too close from the uh, CT gantry and we should try to avoid any metallic material uh, uh, close to the uh, generator or close to the ultrasound uh, transducer uh, detector. Uh, so my recommendation is to be at least 50 centimeter distant from the gantry and raise the patient, adding some additional mattress on the top of the CT bed. The CT, the active tracker also should be located in a stable area, uh, probably um, against bone uh, structures. So uh, if you are uh, following these uh, advice, I think we, you will get very, very good results. So in my conclusion, I would like to insist on this very interesting move of having premium imaging features reaching uh, Arieta 750 for diffusion of uh, uh, interventional procedure and improvement of uh, guidance. Basically, it, it is a pity to see that in most uh, departments, the very complex interventional radiology procedures are performed with low end system that will not provide sufficient uh, guidance uh, quality. So this uh, system really has a very uh, good B mode, as I hope I, I had convinced you. Easy visualization of the knee tip, good Doppler and micro Doppler performance, and see US infusion capabilities. And you see in this case how accurate is the placement of the needle and the bobs taken at the right uh, uh, area that is the only solid portion of this necrotic papillary cancer. Automatic fusion with this active patient tracker is a very simple, it's fast and accurate technique. And now it is possible to uh, combine CT and ultrasound information for detection of isoechoic or non-visible lesion at ultrasound, having a good treatment planning with the new routes for putting our electrodes procedure duration is reduced, and we know that CT is a very busy imaging modality with a long waiting list, so if we can do it better, and uh, with no radiation exposure for both the patient and the medical staff. I think this is a winning uh, situation. Thank you very much for your attention.